Okay, everybody, welcome to the Controllers podcast slash um, talk show, I guess. Anyway, on here, we're going to get together here. I got um, Arctic Alias and Alt Play here, and I'm Tim from Tim Talks Games. And what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and give you our opinions on some upcoming games or just whatever is going on in the gaming world right now. So anyway, um, like I said, we're going to talk about some new upcoming games and stuff. So why don't we go around and uh, go ahead and introduce ourselves and get to know what some of our favorite games are coming out and what we're excited for. So uh, Arctic, why don't you start us off? Uh, I'm actually really excited for No Man's Sky. I know there's like a lot of hype for it though. But I'm still pretty excited about it. Also, uh, Dark Souls 3. That one's pretty uh, nice. Good, good. Um, I mean, while we're waiting for No Man's Sky, have you ever heard of Elite Dangerous? Uh, I have not, actually. Alright, I think you should actually go ahead and check some of that out, too. It's kind of like almost the same premise. It's, um, while No Man's Sky is kind of set up like this huge uh, universe, like billions of planets, um, Elite Dangerous is actually out right now. And it's kind of this huge universe. Also, you can create your own ship. You can be whatever you want. You can be like a trader, uh, a thief, try to steal other people's resources and everything. So it kind of looks like No Man's Sky, but it's not so much focused around the exploration of planets as it's trying to make yourself in the universe in a name nice. for yourself. So, so check that out. Uh, what about you, Alt? What are you into? Uh, chill the Beast here of Alt Play. Um, upcoming game I'm looking forward to is Overwatch. I've been watching Overwatch for... Uh, since they've announced it, since they've launched the beta. Kind of hoping I get in before it comes out, but uh, I'm actually hyped about that. It's been a while since I've enjoyed a shooter, or even enjoyed looking at a shooter, a uh, first-person shooter. Uh, and that's... I'm, I'm hyped about Overwatch, mostly because it's not the traditional uh, what's your KD? What's your kill-death yeah. ratio? Uh, it's it's objective-based, and I, I like that more than uh, just a general death match. You can you can have the best KD, but if you're not completing the objective, you you could be the worst person on the team, even yeah, with the exactly. best KD. So. It reminds me a lot of when I saw it, and not just because the art style, it reminded me a lot of uh, Team Fortress 2 and stuff. And people yeah. were saying, like, yo, this is just Blizzard taking Team Fortress 2, and I'm like, it looks like it's a little more, like, class-based. Well, I mean, Team Fortress 2 is, like, hella heavy class-based, mm -hmm. but Overwatch just has so many more, right. so it's like you almost take, like, the type of setup with all the different characters from like a MOBA and you throw them into a first person shooter mm -hmm. and yeah I'm exactly. actually kind of excited for that too like I said I haven't been following it too closely and I noticed uh, I watched some of the pre-release stuff or I watched some of the beta footage it looks like it would be mm -hmm. some good fun to get into so I'm deciding if I want to pick that up or not um, definitely it looks good, it <laughs> yes, looks good. Same here. I, uh, I'm actually really surprised that Blizzard was actually going to make a shooter because they're not really doing a lot of shooter things Right. They're more for like the, like you, like the wild stuff. You can look stuff. at like the rest of yeah. You can look at the rest of everything that they've done, and you would never guess that shooter was next on their list. But like, yeah. like I've been following it, and I've been actually kind of analyzing it. You can tell that they've really done their research, done their work, because it's like I said, it's objective based. It's not about KD ratio, but they've made it so that if you don't have the right class, you can be the best. You can have your your top character who you're best with, and it doesn't matter because if you trump someone else, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. Yeah. Over yeah, and over and, and over. Everything has its uh, balance to it. It's this right. character is great in this situation. This character is not so great in this situation. This person's gonna destroy that one, but get destroyed by that one. So it's a good balance, and I feel like right. that's something that they definitely gonna be able to pull off. I don't feel like there's a lot of companies that can do that, but I feel like with their experience in the past. I mean, take for example, you have. They've been at, like, what, 10 years now on World of Warcraft? And you have yep. hundreds and hundreds of items and end gear activity and stuff, and they somehow manage to, each time with all these hundred different items, all these different skills, still mm -hmm. balance it so there's not something that always trumps the other one. So I feel like, you know what, they're in a good situation to go ahead and make that and be successful with it. Right. So, I mean, uh, they, they They've clearly done their research. Yeah, they definitely mm -hmm. know what they're doing. Personally, I'm actually looking forward to... Um, Dark Souls 3, of course. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone through the rest of them. Um, <laughs> I actually am doing like a whole less play on the PS4 version, the Japanese version. I went ahead and got it early because I was tired of dodging spoilers left and right. <laughs> I just wanted to get in before I got it spoiled for me. And I guess now I kind of feel like a dig move because I'm starting to spoil it for other people. But, I mean, I, I let them know, you know, there's going to be spoilers, obviously. But um, other than that, I'm really looking forward to the new Doom 
because it's like such a throwback to like the old school way of how games were and i noticed there was like a big time when all shooters were starting to be like just like you said um they were more about just like oh the customization like you had call of duty where you can customize the hell out of your gun like four different attachments camos and everything and then you look at doom and they're like you know we're just gonna put you back into the old school arena style where um there's power-ups on the map it's all about just moving quick and killing everybody and i thought it was interesting is that um the last couple of years shooters have moved towards back towards that like the more fast pace like i guess you could say kind of titanfall started it off with all like the wall running and the mm-hmm. frantic fast movement and then everything like advanced warfare black ops everything has been focused around movement and i feel like it's kind of funny that now Doom is coming back and saying like, oh, you know, what? I'm gonna show you how it's done. I mean, I hope it's good. Uh-huh. I played the alpha a couple months back, and um, a few rounds of the beta this month, and I think they captured it again. But it's only, I guess, time will tell how populated its uh, player base and dedicated it is, and of course, if they're gonna support it well after launch. Because I mean, in this day, it's hard to go ahead and just put out a shooter, and if you don't have a post-launch plan, it's gonna flounder. It, it, uh-huh. It's gonna the yeah. ship's gonna sink very quickly. Yeah. Like, the game looked really brutal. Yeah, that was like, I feel like that was going back to what they wanted to do with it also. But it's like, when you think about it, think about a game like, I was thinking about it earlier too, like we just talked about, you have to have a post-launch plan. Um, That doesn't necessarily mean like you have to have extensive DLC, because that's kind of like a double-edged sword. Some people like it, and it can be done well, or it can be done terribly. But look at... um, Star Wars Battlefront they put out, heavily multiplayer based, and they just said, yeah, we have a season pass, there's expansions, and that's all they left it at, and it left a sour taste in people's mind, in uh, people's mouth, but what they did, too, is they spent forever, like, I think it was four months after the game came out, so many people moved on, they're like, we're gonna finally tell you what you could be getting, and nobody went into it, like, I don't know anybody who said, like, yeah, I'm excited for that, so I feel like... You have to come up front and say, hey, this is what we plan on doing. And I know Doom has, like, the snap map where you can create your own levels and share them with everybody. And I feel like, I guess, in a way, they're kind of relying on the community to do that. And it's not just multiplayer levels. Like, you can create, like, single-player levels, all that stuff. So I feel like they're kind of, in a way, they're giving the community the tools to put as much effort into keeping it alive as they want to. So I feel like, in a way, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, well, Battlefront actually had, like, a ton of hype for it. And I don't think it lived up to it, but, like, since people, like, overly hyped it, they kind of had, like, unreal expectations, because, like, Battlefront 2, everyone loved, so it's kind of hard to live up to Battlefront 2. Yeah, it's it's definitely hard. Like, hype is, like, a big monster, and everyone wants to get hyped up about something, but as you see so Mm. many times that, and it's, like, people think it's recently that it happens. No, it's been throughout, like, all the time. Nothing lives up to the hype. Because it's you set unrealistic expectations for what you want it to be, and it's, it gets to the point where they're never gonna reach it. <laughs> yeah, like Watch Dogs, for example, that <laughs> yeah. didn't live up to any expectations, really. Yeah, I feel like to Watch me, Watch Dogs was a complete yeah. letdown. <laughs> I feel like to me that um, that was kind of the point where I started to a lot of people actually started to feel like the the distaste towards AAA games because. I mean, personally, in my opinion, I haven't really played much of the later Assassin's Creed or even, like, I tried to play Far Cry 4 and I just couldn't get into it because I started to realize that a lot of times they say, like, they're these massive open worlds, but there's really nothing in them. Like, it's just a bunch of random, like, people walking around, a bunch of things to collect, and to me, that just it was never fun. It was never fun walking around, collect this little item, collect that little item, and I feel like they use that as a selling point like oh it's this huge dynamic world but there's really not a lot to do in it aside from these little Mm. basic side missions that are just go here and collect that i'm pretty good uh for far cry primal they've actually changed it up quite a bit though they did yeah i don't know i kind of avoided primal for now but i might pick it up if it goes on sale sometime i heard it was all right (laughs) but after I don't know, after Watch Dogs, I kind of tried to avoid Ubisoft as much as possible. <laughs> um, I was even... I mean, what was surprised me is I was even so skeptical to pick up Rainbow Six Siege. And I ended up doing it, and that's probably like one of the best shooters I've played in a while. Just because it kind of combines like everything that you like about some of the bigger ones. Like It combines uh, all the class-based stuff. It's almost like the mix between like a MOBA, a shooter, and... <laughs> A hyper competitive game like Counter Strike or something, I just can't get enough of it. I keep playing it. That's what I keep finding myself coming back to lately. But it's just like this well, mixing of genres. 
Well, for Assassin's Creed, they kind of dropped the ball on Unity. Because yeah. Black Flag was actually the last one that I bought. And then after that, they've kind of been messing it up a lot. Because all I saw was just videos of Unity and people just glitching out around the whole map. <laughs> It was. It was kind That's of, all it is, right? Yeah, that That's was not all, the game. I that thought was that was the, the gameplay. Because <laughs> I remember my brother went out and bought it, and I literally told him, like, dude, what are you doing? Like, have you not been paying attention? He's like, oh, but I like Assassin's Creed. I'm like, bro, you're going to hate it after this. And It's, it's the name that was selling he, it. it. It's he, an Assassin's Creed game. I'm pretty sure he made it less than an hour in before he just said, forget about it. Like, I'm done. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anybody but, who went through that one. Black Flag was the last one I actually found good, even though a lot of people actually didn't like it. I still find Black Flag was the last one I liked. Because I, I played the really first fun. one, the second, they're all good. And then I was, I was about to buy Unity. Then I saw a couple of videos, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that to myself. <laughs> I thought it was like, I thought it was more of like a joke. Like, I was like, is this serious? Like... Like I said, I feel like that year, uh, what was that, 2014 is when people just sort they hyped the hell out of everything and everybody got let down. You had, um, mm -hmm. let's see, you had Watch Dogs, you had Destiny, you had Unity. Oh, man, I know there was a few more. Um, you had Advanced Warfare. I know, like, pretty much, like, what would say probably, like, 75% of the Call of Duty, um fan base was just against advanced warfare and the same was with ghost before that and like i really haven't seen this big of a positive call of duty comeback with black ops 3 i saw a lot of people enjoyed that but i said you hadn't seen that until way back with like black ops 2 it's just like um it, it couldn't live up to the hype like these people hyped these games up to be these huge things and they just couldn't develop they couldn't um i don't say they couldn't like develop it right i just feel like it was almost at a point where they expected it to be perfect, and any small little bit would just immediately piss off the player base of what they expected it to be perfect. Yo, know, Destiny put in like uh, the most money out of like any game in history, and I feel like GTA Five didn't put in nearly as much. They still put in a lot, but I feel like GTA Five still has more to offer than Destiny. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Out, of that, out of that whole list you, of games you announced, uh, Destiny came back with, what was it, The Taken King? Yeah. And, yeah. They, and they, they got it together, but everyone else, no one else on that list really yeah. picked no up the slack. So, so Destiny kind of fixed their problem, but that was yeah, about it. it. They still had that problem to begin with. And honestly, I still, every once in a while, I'll pop it in because I have a few friends. We just run through I mean, like, when it first came out, like, people thought that it was a game that you could play, like, hours on end, week after week, and... Then when they exhausted everything they was doing, they're like, yo, this is boring, what the hell? And it like I remember so many people saying it's like nobody is forcing you to play this game. Like there are other games out there. Play it maybe mm -hmm. one or two days a week. Do your weeklies, your dailies, because it was set up like a light MMO. It was do your yeah. dailies, your weeklies, and then put something else in your console. You know what I mean? Come back next week. That's what it's mm -hmm. really for there. Yeah. It's, it's not for for uh what do they call it? Playing many hours at once. Yeah, like just binging on it, like that like binging, that's what I look for. Binging, like binge watch, <laughs> like Walking Dead, whatever. But nah, it's like you can't really force yourself into doing it because um, I think I realized a lot of people said it had a whole lot of problems with it. And a lot of those problems people were tying to, oh, you have to spend hours trying to get the loot you want. But mm -hmm. it's like you really don't have to. You have the same odds of playing a few games a day versus playing 100 games a day. So you know what I mean? Like don't drive yourself crazy mm -hmm. over it. Play a few games a day or every other day, whatever. Just... I feel like, in a way, people created a problem that wasn't there just because, like I said, their expectations and everything. So, I right. feel in a way, hype can just potentially ruin a game because um, another one I thought about, too, was, what is it, Fallout 4? I mean, the hype was astronomical about that. And, I mean, <laughs> going into it, I knew it. I'm like, yo, this is a Bethesda open world game. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be glitches. They're going to be funny as hell. They're going to mm -hmm. add to it. But I knew there was going to be problems with it. And... People expected it to be like the Jesus of gaming for that year. Like, like this is yep. gonna, this is gonna make everything right. This is gonna be the reason that um, the gaming industry can still survive. And I mean, people had problems with it. I had problems with it, but it was still a good game. But right. I feel like again, it reached that point where it they put it to be here, and it was only ever going to reach here because that's what they were limited at, hardware wise, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, it was a, a fun game, a fun entry in the series. It's just not what people expected it to be. Yeah. Not as grand as people expected it to turn out. Yeah, it's like uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Everyone loved, well, Skyrim. And then Elder Scrolls Online came out. Everyone's like, oh, this is going to be great. One month into playing it, well, no one's there anymore. Everyone kind of just left. One friend who plays Elder Scrolls Online, he's like, it's lonely. Like, (laughs) (laughs) He's like, it's a game you need friends to play with, but he can't convince anybody else to get it with him. Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. I was talking about, like, Elder Scrolls Online, like, three years ago when someone first talked about it, and me and all my friends were all going to play together the whole time. It came out a bunch of years later. None of us. (laughs) I tried it for, like, a month. I got to, like, level six. And then I kind of gave up. Uh. That's another problem, I feel like, um, around, like, this whole, like, idea of hype and stuff, too, is revealing your game too early. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. And that's also, like you said, talking about Elder Scrolls Online, I feel like that's a problem they have with it. They revealed it way too early that it's like people think, like, okay, this game's been in development for years. It's going to be massive. It's going to be huge. But there's a point where either the developer didn't think of something or they reached a limit with what they could do that it's like, okay, we spent all the time tuning what's here, but you guys expect so much more. It's like, um, think about back to, oh, my gosh, Duke Nukem 3D, Notorious, like... Yep. Not 3D. Perfect. Uh, what was it? Forever. There we go. But, uh, forever. Duke Nukem 3D forever. was just fantastic. But Duke Nukem Forever was. It was just. Eh. It was alright. Um, yeah. But it felt like they had. Of course, they revealed it way too early. They revealed it like 15 years too early. And then it went through a lot of trouble. But when it finally came out, it couldn't live up to the hype. It was so back in the past and like the late 90s type of humor and gameplay that. It yeah. missed what I feel like a lot of audiences were looking at, especially newer audiences, because, mm-hmm. I mean, gaming has basically exploded in, like, the last five or six years. It was, I remember back in, like, the PS2 and Xbox, like, three, the original Xboxes, it was, you know, it was, okay, maybe every couple of people had one or were into it, but now it's just, like, shit, everybody has a PS4, or everyone has their own PC right. or whatever. It's become so massive that everybody's doing right. it. It's, like... It's like watching TV at this point. It's mm-hmm. people are like, oh, what are you playing now? It's everybody kind of expects it to happen. Right. So. And if you if you look at games from that time, same time period, five years ago, they're completely different than what we will be playing now. Like a game from what 2011, yeah. you would never see a game like that published now and sell well because it, it's even in that five years, what what a game is has changed drastically. Yeah. Like I, w- I would never, I would never expect a two thousand a game that's been promoted from five years ago to now to sell now and well without changing what they were aiming at back then. Yeah, never. And I feel like also going back revealing it too early. A lot of times people get mad because it's like when they release something really early, it's not even so much of this is what we're gonna make. This is it's like a concept what they have. It's like. This is the idea mm-hmm. we're trying to capture. And people say, like, I see so many times people go back and they watch, like, the trailer, like, this is the game we show the guys. Like, this is the concept. This is what they wanted to make. And it's nothing here says this is the final product. Like, even right. thinking back, a lot of people were pissed off about, we talked about Watch Dogs earlier, the graphics downgrade, or um, mm-hmm. even more so the division, the graphics downgrade. It's They had the idea, that, like, hey, we want to create this, detailed world make it look as good as possible but then over time throughout development they realized hey we really can't do that with the current hardware that most people had Mm -hmm. because it's either they release it for like people with like two thousand dollar water-cooled computers and that's like the only people that can play and they like slash the profits they can make from because at the end of the day it's an industry it's they have to make some sort of money it's about money Mm -hmm. and it sounds bad to say oh it's about money but if we're going to say we enjoy them I mean we got to say okay we have to support the industry because we're the ones that are out there supporting the industry but at the end of the day it comes down to that it's this is the concept this is what we want to make um there could be some limitations on it in the end but you know what we're going to try our damn best to get that product to you exactly how we showed it to you no, well, I don't know about Arkham Knight. They didn't really do that part. Yeah, that one was... It's, they even took it off Steam for a while because people hated it. Yeah, yeah. that was that was terrible optimization. And it was like... Because um, the game itself was alright. I mean, I liked, I had like a kind of like weird relationship with the Arkham series. 
I remember when Arkham City came out, I played it for a couple hours and I could never get into it. My brother had just bought it. He bought the pack that had Arkham City and Arkham Asylum in it. So I played a little bit of Arkham City and I'm like, it's all right, it's fun. And then I put it away for a while. And then on like a day I was just completely off, had nothing to do. I popped in Arkham Asylum and I got so hooked to that game. I played straight through it. I started at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then I finished at like 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yo, where did that time go? <laughs> but um, <laughs> Yeah, the game was great. Like, but I've never actually tried Arkham Knight yet because I'm kind of worried about it from what people have said and how it was taken off Steam and everything like that. So it's kind of made me worried. The reason it came <laughs> off Steam was it was just the PC port was terrible. Like, yeah. people complain, like, they say, oh, the game was under 60 FPS. That wasn't really the problem because the game ran just fine. I had it on the PS4. My brother bought it too. And I played it every once in a while. But the problem wasn't that it was they could lock it to 30 FPS. It was, it was constantly stuttering and freezing and crashing. And the reason they took it off because it was a bad port. It was, it was just an okay game. I feel like um, they missed the idea. Everybody loved being Batman, like the Predator sections, the stealth sections, just beating the hell out of people, using all those gadgets. And they put it pretty much like 80% of the game, you're in the Batmobile. And it's kind of yeah. just like a boring tank simulator. So I feel like yeah. they, they kind of hit that fault with it. But... The reason they pulled it off Steam is they nobody everyone was asking for refunds. I think actually that's the reason right. Valve put the Steam refund policy out there was after that. Mm -hmm. And it was also be it was also because the game cost sixty dollars. Uh, when you buy a game through Steam and you get a refund, Steam keeps their part of the money. So if you get your full sixty dollars, then whatever's missing, whatever Steam keeps, is coming from. Uh, the developers of the game. Oh, so in turn, every time they got a ref every time someone asks for a refund, they're actually losing money yeah, off of it. So that. that's that's mostly why it came back. They pulled it uh, off came off Steam. Steam. Mm -hmm. I bet you can yeah. probably find the disc version in a store somewhere, right. like the box version. Right. Well, uh, I still uh, for like the refund thing, I had troubles with it because I bought the game Bully. I uninstalled it for a while because I never really played it. Because I beat the game, like, I think twice now. Then I was going to do a Let's Play of it. And it doesn't work. <laughs> and then I've tried it. And, like, it didn't work, like, months ago. So I uninstalled it. I reinstalled it now. Still, same problem. And I try to get a refund. And they just haven't responded. Wow. Like, they just respond. I think, I remember, though, um, they're pretty kind of... They're kind of strict with their refund policy. Um... I'm pretty sure it's you have to have less than two hours played, or I think it's within two weeks yep. of the purchase. Because I remember, um, I'm like a huge fan of like the roller coaster tycoon games. Like I've been playing this since I was like four years old. I remember like that was one of my first memories. Like my cousin and I just sitting there playing at like all hours of the night. But when they announced the new one and it was like roller coaster tycoon world and it was kind of shoddy, and then they said if you pre-ordered it, you could be in the first beta. I would have, like, intentions to buy the game, and I was on my old computer at the time. I didn't know if I could run it, so I pre-ordered it for the beta just to see if I could run the game, and it ran all right, but then as I started to play around with it, I'm just like, yo, this is, like, absolute, like, trash at the moment, <laughs> and, I mean, the game is still, like, absolute trash. Like, that's something for a whole nother time. That's when I'm going back to revealing your game too early or expectations set too high, but um, I went ahead, I just said, okay, Steam, you know, it's just not running right or it's just kind of a buggy glitchy mess can i get my refund and i think i had it within the next two days i had the money back to my account and everything so mm. it's kind of like a little they're kind of strict about their refund policy but it's definitely like they're they honest to it they're honest to it especially so it's a good thing yeah. i'd say yeah they, typically if you've played more than what two hours they won't give you the money back but they don't care so much about the two weeks uh having to refund in two weeks. They, I, I bought a game and didn't play it at all for like six months and I went to run it. It didn't run on my computer at all and I got uh, my money back. It, they didn't They didn't care about the two weeks policy, but as long as I didn't play for two hours, they were fine with it. So. Man, I should do that. I have I have the original Bioshock in my Steam library. Bioshock uh, 2 and Infinite, because I got them like, all bundled together. They installed just fine, but literally Bioshock 1, I cannot get it to run. I've tried all the fixes. It cannot run. I might try that later just to give it another shot, and if it's not, I'll go ahead and try to get the refund on it, but I didn't know about that. I thought they were, like, really strict to the whole two weeks thing also. Nah, they, they, they like, as long as 
it's in the library and they can see that you haven't played it they'll they'll let it they'll let it slide hmm, i might have to try that then <laughs> well speaking of the, the bioshock series uh infinite was extremely quick like i played the game and it took like six hours for me to beat it yeah. and i was with trying to explore it too it was also like extremely like linear Mm -hmm. Which I didn't like, but it was still like a great game, other than it being like six hours. Yeah, if I you want to like, take it slowly. I felt like uh, Bioshock Infinite was really linear too, and I felt like storyline wise it had no reason to be linear. But I mean, like, and this is not a bad thing. I'm saying like the original Bioshock was pretty linear and heavy with backtracking, but it made sense in the story, because like, I mean, is there really spoilers for like a what eight nine year old game now? But the whole idea that you were being, com like, psychologically controlled the whole time to go do this, go do that, be like, so it made sense in a linear setting, but I feel like, I love Bioshock, I gave it a bad I felt like it was too linear at times. And, like I said, you could kind of run through it super quick. Yeah, it was, uh, really quick, which I didn't like about it. Like, I got to the end, and I just sat there for a moment, like, in silence, like, is, is it really over? <laughs> yeah. I tried to replay it, and I was like, and it just came back to the ending scene. Whenever I try to replay it, I was like, "Well, guess I'm not gonna play this anymore." <laughs> and I can't really uh, refund it now. Oh, uh, you had it on. I played it through on my 360 when it first came out, and I don't know. It's one of those games. Every once in a while, I'll go back and I'll play through it again. And the way it's set up, as I'll discover something new each time, like one small little detail that tells you just a little bit more about the story. I think that's cool, but. It's still, it's like, you can't change the fact that it's such a linear, heavy game. But, I mean, it's story-based, so it's kind of hard yeah. to, like, an open-world story-based right. game that's, like, perfect. Um, like, the best narrative-driven games I can think of, I'm pretty sure, like, almost all of them are very linear-driven. I think probably the only expectation, I mean, exception I can make with that is probably The Witcher 3. Um, mm -hmm. That was huge open-world, and... I loved the entire story, the characters, but I just didn't like the gameplay behind it. Um, I felt the combat was super clunky, really damn hard to even control, and it kind of got frustrating after a while, but other than that, I feel like that's an example of how you can do a story-driven game in an open world, is by giving so many meaningful story choices that you can explore yourself. Um, right. A lot of games give you the freedom to explore a lot of different story options, but a lot of them aren't necessarily meaningful. Yeah, well, The Witcher 3 also had uh, plenty of hype as well, going back to, like, overly hyping things. Everyone was, like, really looking forward to The Witcher 3. They made a really big thing about it. And I felt like it was good, but not great, which they, everyone was saying it was going to be great. Well, for Back to Watch Dogs, everyone was going to say it's great, and it turned out to be a disappointment. Yeah. So... I feel like, in a way, The Witcher 3... Like, when you compare the two, The Witcher 3 definitely lived up to some of its hype, as in Watch Dogs lived up to absolutely nothing. Like, none of its hype. Yeah. Um, also, with Arkham Knight, I don't feel like it lived up to a lot of its hype, and that's why I'm kind of worried about No Man's Sky. It has the opportunity to live up to its hype, but it also has the opportunity to just die out extremely yeah. fast. But I feel like it can still live up to its hype. I think one thing in managing the hype, too, is what the developers choose to interact with the people, especially leading up to the release. <laughs> I remember everyone was so hyped for No Man's Sky when they announced it and showed it off. And I remember after a few months, I, can, I remember people saying, like, so wait, what do you actually do in this game? Like, what is there to actually do besides <laughs> just fly around and scan stuff? And then I remember maybe, like, oh, less than a week later, the developers got on, like, well, let us show you what you can do. So I feel like the developers can really play a role in managing hype also by showing, you know what, these are what we're telling you you can do versus let's just release another cool-looking cinematic trailer to get people more mm -hmm. excited for it. I feel like there's good ways to manage it and bad ways to manage it. You know, I just everyone loves the game, which makes me kind of worried about it, if that makes sense. Because, like, I get it, it looks like an amazing game, but I'm trying to look for something bad about it because I'm kind of worried that people will find things bad about it once it comes out, and he'll just focus on that for, like, the whole time, and then I might die out. But, I mean, you still have the opportunity to live up to its hype.
Yeah. Hmm. Talking about uh, finding things that are bad in games, uh, we're getting kind of close to our wrap-up mark here. Uh, go ahead. What would you guys define as you think is, at the end of the day, your perfect game? Something that there's very little flaws to find, or the flaws are so minuscule, it's almost like it's not even worth mentioning. What would you guys say that is? Um... I just started playing it, but Undertale, actually. Mm -hmm. The guy that made the game, uh, he was Game Maker, and that's what I've been using to try to make my own game. And then he literally said that you could walk over something, and you're not supposed to. So he just said on Twitter, well, looks like the time for new glass. And then so you just walk over, and you just walk on glass now. <laughs> and I feel like there weren't many problems with it, because he doesn't seem like... He actually put a lot of work into it, even though he did, but he's actually, like, a really funny dude. So, I actually think Undertale's probably, like, a perfect game. It's kind of like you said, like, there's what, it looks like there's something's wrong with it, but it's part of its charm. It's part of what makes it unique in its own way. Yeah. I say that. That's one that I've been meaning to hop into, too, Undertale, because I heard nothing but good things about it. But yeah, it's a great game. Really? It's a great game. Yeah. Alright, well, um, you chill. Let's see. If I had to, if I had to, perfect game. Perfect game has RPG elements, tells a beautiful story, but it lets me make decisions in the story, and the decisions actually matter. Um, like if if we're having a conversation and I choose one of two options, they should probably change the outcome of the story not not drastically because they they'd all have to build up across the course of the game mm -hmm. but it should probably close off one door or one path of dialogue or an outcome uh, later on in the story and they need to matter like if i make a decision at the beginning of the game like to be angry all the time or to be mean to other characters at the end it probably shouldn't include me being nice to characters that I was mean to at the beginning. Uh, that's that's what would be a perfect game for me. I mean, I'd make uh, everything matter. <laughs> what systems do you have? All like, what do you play on usually? Uh, uh, mostly now. Mostly now, I'm on a PC. Um, I have a Wii. I don't have a Wii U. Uh, that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, <laughs> but. Um, and I also have a PS3. I haven't gone up to PS4 yet, mostly because there hasn't been any game really in this generation for that would have me to buy the next system. Push towards that. It, yeah. I mean, oh, and I also have a, a 3DS as well. Oh yeah. Uh, when you were talking about like a game where the decisions you make kind of like have effects way down the line, I would say mm -hmm. definitely check out if you can borrow someone's PS4 or something or watch it through. Check out Until Dawn. I don't know if you heard about it. Um, Until Dawn, yeah. yes. <laughs> that was that was phenomenal because I'm a huge fan of like just the cheesy old school horror movies. Like back here, I got. Let me see. Uh, let's look. Cheesy old school. I got Amityville Horror. I have the first five Friday the Thirteenth movies. Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> Halloween. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Everything back here. I love that style, and they Good captured movie. it so well. But it was just all about decision making like how you treat the other characters how they treat each yeah. other yeah it was done well so i mean that's definitely if you're looking for an aspect of something like that give that a try out that would be it's just a great type of game but um anyway i'm, my I'm not i'm not big on horror yeah but like i've seen it it it, it doesn't really play out like a game it more plays like, uh, like a movie that yeah. you make decisions yeah on. and honestly I, I do like that aspect of it you can sit back and just watch you don't even have to be person playing you can sit back and watch someone else play and it really feels like you have a hand in Man. the experience we had i had one of the most unique experiences i've ever had playing a game with that we used like the ps4 share play where you can trade the controller around and we set uh -huh. up a twitch stream where whoever was playing had it streaming and we would there was eight characters in the game so we got like eight of us together like just online and we would just swap off when it came to somebody else's character so we were all watching on twitch stream joking mm -hmm. around chatting the whole game passing back and forth back and forth the controller through the share play we were just having like a great time it was hilarious but so it was like it's definitely something that it's great like i said it's great to play it's great to watch it's great to play with friends it's great to watch friends it's right. just a fun game but um I would say my perfect game. Uh, I can tell honestly. I can name it. It's um, it's something I've never had any problems with. And I still play it every once in a while. 
Um, it's one of the Zelda games. It's not like the big everyone cares, like Majora's Mask, Rock Your Time. It's actually one of the Game Boy. Uh, well, it started on the Game Boy. It came on the Game Boy Color. Uh, Link's Awakening. Um, <laughs> honestly, because that was the first handheld Zelda game, and it's like, let's take this massive open world, put it onto a tiny cartridge, have you take it anywhere with you, and still be able to live the huge Zelda adventure that's all about um, about exploration, solving puzzles, great combat. Like mm-hmm. It managed to put everything that it was known for into one tiny little cartridge I could take with me anywhere I went. I remember I got one when I was like three years old, and that thing literally would stay in my pocket with just like Link's Awakening in it all the way through, like, my first grade year of school. Like, I would always had that on me. Like, that was my go-to thing. But to me, like, what made it so perfect, like I said, the combat was great. I mean, the story was great. The exploration was great. And it was, it managed to take an experience that normally was just reserved for a console you would plug into your TV and put it anywhere you can take it with you. And to me, that just blew my mind at, like, five, six years old. And it still does to this day, even when the even later handheld Zelda games came out too. To me, nothing could live up to how that one was. And I mean, it's like I don't think I'm alone in that opinion. Like I was watching, like a lot of people rank that pretty high in like the best Zelda games. But to me, that's probably what I would consider a perfect game. It had its share of faults with uh, some bugs and glitches in it. But I mean, every game has right. that. But other than that, right. like, the the whole pacing of the game to me was perfect. So. I think well, Awakening is the one, maybe one out of two Zelda games I've never played. I'm gonna get, well, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. I started <laughs> Majora's Mask, and I just I couldn't get into it. It's the one that I never <laughs> finished. It's the only Zelda game I have never finished. I just yeah, I think a lot it. of people that's their favorite game, probably. Yeah, that's yeah. what I hear. I'd say well, it's um, on most people's list. My favorite is uh, Awakening, but my second favorite is um, the one that came out uh, for 3DS, A Link Between Worlds, because uh I remember I played through the original Zelda and Zelda 2, and they were all about tackle anything, whatever order you want, and then Mm -hmm. with A Link to the Past came out, it was still a great game, but it really lost some of that freedom in it, and then A Link Between Worlds was like, you know what, no, you have full freedom. You rent your right. items, you don't find them, so you can tackle it any order you want. You need that item, come back with it. You don't need all the other ones. You can just go mm-hmm. wherever you want, whenever you want. So, yeah, I played the demo for that in the store, and before I before I picked up the 3DS, I was like, "This is the dumbest. This is probably gonna be the dumbest game in the world." I can't I can't believe they added a gimmick like I can go onto the wall and, and do kinds of tricks and stuff. It's just it's just a regular Zelda game past that. I played it for like ten minutes. I was like, you know, this is really a genius mechanic. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I can't believe they're using this all the right ways. I can't believe I hated this before I even picked it up. It's a good game. That's a good that game. That's a great one. Ooh. But um uh, going back to uh your favorite game Joe, um there's actually one game that I play on the PS3 and you play as like an agent. And you got every single time anyone talked to you, you got four choices, and it completely changes up the game every single time. I forget the name of it, but it's actually really good. It was like I've never heard of it before. Just saw it randomly in a store. Like, no, I'm just gonna pick it up, and it turned out to be a great game. And you even get an achievement for sleeping with everybody in the game. <laughs> so I mean, that's always a plus. Yeah, that is always. You don't remember the name of it? No, I don't remember. I'll try to uh, find it again, though. Okay. <laughs> well, let me know about that one, too. I'll... That sounds like... Oh, God. Wait, you... No, nah, I was thinking of the wrong game, because I don't think it would be about that. You were talking about... You were, like, an agent. I, I immediately thought of, like, Heavy Rain, but I don't think that's it. That's all about, like, serial killers and stuff. Right. No, it's not it. No. And not sleeping with people. No, not. Nah, it's <laughs> trying not to get killed by the serial killers. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's about uh, time to wrap it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're hitting that 30 minute mark. Alright, well guys, um, that was the uh, first episode of the Controllers podcast slash talk show slash whatever you, whatever you think it is. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> um, like I said, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'll have annotations over um, everybody's name, so go ahead, check out our individual channels. We all do our own thing aside from this. 
um definitely like i said keep it right here keep it on all our channels because we're going to continue this going on uh go ahead if you have anything you'd like to see us cover anything you'd love to hear about or our opinions on go ahead leave it down in the comments for us we go ahead we're going to be reviewing those we talk throughout the week we get our ideas together and then hopefully we can get a new episode out like what every week or so and maybe two times a week just keep the feedback coming keep the ideas coming and we'll keep talking about them but anyways, guys, this is Tim. I'm signing out, and we'll see you guys again soon.